Negotiations between the P5 plus one group and Iran on its nuclear program are set to resume later this month in Geneva. Former White House and State Department officials here in Washington say the talks will focus on ways to prevent Iran from having the capacity to build a nuclear weapon. The framework deal from November aims to reach a mutually agreed long-term comprehensive solution that would ensure Iran's nuclear program will be exclusively peaceful. A good agreement can deter Iran from making the political decision to exercise that capability and proceed to produce nuclear weapons. The U.S. Uh, intelligence community uh, believes Iran has not yet made that decision. The interim deal loosens some sanctions on Iran and states that there should be no new sanctions imposed during the six-month negotiating period, although that period could be extended. Robert Einhorn, a former proliferation expert at the U.S. State Department, says the U.S. Congress needs to prepare further sanctions to focus minds in Tehran and says the White House should also raise the stakes. The president should state publicly that while he'd do everything uh, possible to reverse an Iranian breakout decision by non-military means, he'd be prepared to use military force, if necessary, to stop Iran from building a nuclear weapon. After a meeting with the International Atomic Energy Agency's chief, Israel's president has made clear his government's skepticism. For many years, Iran violated multiple United Nations Security Council resolutions as well as the board resolutions. Iran does not uphold its commitment to cooperate with the agency investigation and does not provide full transparency. When it comes to building confidence, actions matters, no words. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has described the interim deal as a historic mistake because there is recognition of Iran's right to maintain peaceful nuclear facilities. Israel wants all those sites to be dismantled. Former U.S. Middle East envoy Dennis Ross thinks Israel may accept a solid compromise. I think it is basically prevention through deterrence. Mm -hmm. And as and that gets to the, the question about, about Israel, would Israel accept this? Well. If you produce this agreement, um, I'm not saying that the Israelis will do handstands over it, but the reality is if it becomes very clear that there are restrictions and the level of the intrusiveness gives us a high level of confidence and we're able to demonstrate the resolve, mm -hmm. uh, then I think the answer is yes, they will accept it. U.S. negotiators will be working to reduce or eliminate Iran's stockpile of 20 percent enriched uranium because of the speed in which this material can be converted to weapons grade level. Dennis Ross says the negotiating strategy toward the Iranian leadership needs to be tough. And the key for them to be successful is to be able to go to the Supreme Leader and demonstrate unmistakably what the consequences of not reaching agreement are. Not what the benefits are, what the consequences are. Experts here agree that Iran will not give up its nuclear capabilities altogether. The key, they say, is to get Iran to dramatically reduce its capacity and then have international inspectors continuously verify any deal. This is Priscilla Huff for JN1 in Washington.